Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Emmanuel. Thank you for joining us live and in person. We rejoice that you're with us this day. If you are listening on the radio, this is Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Seboig, Michigan. We're broadcasting on 88.5 FM, WCTP, Gagetown, Michigan Radio. We'll be using Divine Service setting one. If you have a hymnal at home, beginning on page 151 today. If you found us on Facebook Live, Facebook a little bit later, or our YouTube channel, we thank you for checking us out there. A couple of quick announcements today. Firecracker will begin next Sunday. What is Firecracker? Uh, because Sunday school is kind of on a hiatus, this will be for our young kids, preschool, kindergarten, first grade, that age. Uh, it'll be in the church basement. This will be a Collide-sponsored activity. It is really for kids and parents, so you're welcome to take your young ones and stay. There'll be coffee there for you, activities that you can do with your kids as well. That begins next Sunday in the church basement between services about 9.15. And the other announcement I have for you, next Sunday is All Saints Day. We rejoice in that day. Uh, it is that day that we remember those who have faithfully departed from our congregation over the previous year. So please be aware that we'll be doing that remembrance next Sunday. This Sunday is Reformation Sunday observed. We remember today how in 1517 on October 31st, Martin Luther posted those 95 theses on the castle church door in Wittenberg, spurning on the Reformation, bringing the gospel back to the church. We'll celebrate that today in hymns, in word, and in the sermon as well. Our service begins with our opening hymn, as you see it in the bulletin, page number two, 607, from depths of woe, I cry to thee.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your word. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> I will speak of the testimonies before kings, O Lord, and shall not be put to shame. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord, and shall not be put to shame. Ye in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us in times of temptation. Defend us against all enemies and grant to and grant to your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for this Reformation Day, written in the book of Revelation, chapter 14. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. Walk about Zion, go around her, number her towers, consider well her ramparts, go through her citadels, that you may tell the next generation that this is God, our God, forever and ever. The epistle written in Romans chapter 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God, whereby works of the law no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Christ Jesus for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins, it was to show his righteousness at the present time, so that he might be just, and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. What becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. <laughs> Gospel according to St. John, the eighth chapter. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham, and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Please be seated for our hymn of the day, 656. A mighty fortress is our God.
Thanks for our sermon this Reformation Sunday. Our epistle reading from Romans chapter 3, especially these words at the beginning of the text. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law. So every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. So far our text. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now we know. That's the way Paul begins that text. We know about the law. We know about the primary use of the law. We know how to use the law rightly. And we know the law's place in our lives. The law must have a secondary place to that eternal gospel. The gospel must predominate. It must. But in Luther's day, it surely didn't. The law predominated that medieval church. The people were told what they must do to make themselves right with God. To be justified with God, you must do certain things, they were told. Buy indulgences, go on pilgrimages, say masses for the dead. Do what is in you. And if you do your part, Jesus will do his part. There was no gospel in that system. Now we know. They didn't know. They forgot the role of the law in the life of the Christian. How sad to take away Christ from the church. That's why we Lutherans place a very high emphasis on studying the Bible, on knowing Scripture, because when you know Scripture, you will not let Christ be taken from the church. An informed, inspired laity is what every church needs. For you are the church of Christ. It is you the demand to hear Jesus Christ proclaimed from the pulpit. It is you who use the law rightly. It is you who rejoice in the gospel. This Reformation Sunday is a reminder that every church of every age needs reformation. Paul says it in our epistle reading today. Now we know. We know. Whatever the law says, it speaks to those under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all may be held accountable to God. That is the primary use of the law. That mirror. Paul explains that wonderful use here in our text. The law is meant to show forth our sin. The law doesn't make us better doesn't show us the good things we've done. No, the law makes us worse. It shows us the bad things we've done. And the more we know the law of God, the more we see our sins ever before us. The medieval church didn't use the law like that. For them, the law made them better. They could check off what they had done on the law. They were not using the law rightly. seems foreign to sinners to use the law rightly. But the primary use is the most important one of the law. Now we know the primary use of the law is that mirror shining back our sins unto us, driving us to repentance, showing us who we are and what we need. We need reformation. Rebirth, regeneration, renewal. We need to be justified by God as a gift. Our mouths should be stopped and the whole world held accountable to God because this whole world, you and I and everyone else, are sinners. We should be held accountable for, to God for our sins and our sinful nature. 
Thanks be to God for that eternal gospel. That's the way John puts it in Revelation 14. It is an eternal gospel. It never changes. It's always there. What Jesus has done stays the same yesterday, today, forever, into eternity. That gospel must be the primary message of the church to sinners. As Martin Luther and the other reformers began reading scripture, they found that we are not justified by works of the law, but by what Jesus Christ has done. Not by us buying pieces of paper or saying masses for certain people or going to places or seeing relics. These things are worthless before God. There's only one thing of worth before the Father, to take away sins. Jesus Christ, the propitiation, the atonement day sacrifice for our sins. That's why the Father sent his Son, isn't it? That the eternal gospel would be accomplished and done. And so Jesus came in flesh, God's own Son, true God, the sufficient sacrifice for our sins, true man, able to suffer and die. And he did. As Jesus lived that perfect life, fulfilling what we are unable to do, he offered himself upon the mercy seat of the cross, the true atonement day sacrifice, that on that day, that Good Friday, the sins of the world would be taken away, all of them. That is that eternal gospel. Jesus promised this all the way through his ministry. If you remain in me, if you abide, if you live, if you are alive in me, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Set free from what? Jews think he's talking about their temporal freedom. We've never been a slave to anyone, they say. Of course, that's false. They weren't slaves to Egypt and Assyria and Babylon and now, at that time, Rome. But they forgot. Do we know what the law says? It says to those who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped. The whole world be held accountable to God. They forgot the primary use of the law. They thought they were holy, good enough without God. Why would they need Jesus for anything? They've never been enslaved. They didn't want to be free. But Jesus promises them freedom nonetheless. The sun sets you free. You are free indeed. Every church needs reformation, even ours. Reformation means a continual going back to God and his word, to examining our lives and seeing our sin and traveling to that eternal gospel, to what Jesus has done for you and me and receiving as beggars, mercy, receiving from God the Father, his Son, Jesus Christ, the sacrifice for our sins. That eternal gospel is still the same. The law still speaks to you, showing you your sin. Use it rightly. Do not be like those in Martin Luther's time or like those in the first century. It is so easy to be betrayed into thinking we're good enough. Use the law as that mirror. Show yourself your sin. Confess them before God your Father and draw upon that eternal gospel, Jesus Christ, and him crucified. The message hasn't changed. It remains the same. Law and gospel. 
sin and grace. Jesus, all the way through. How blessed we are to stand on that tradition. So many faithful believers going before us, confessing boldly their sins, and confessing that eternal gospel. It goes back longer than our 168 years here. It goes back further than Martin Luther in 1517. It goes back to Jesus Christ, promising to set you free. So abide in his word, law, and gospel. Now we know, yes. We know. We know our sin, and we know our Savior. In his name, amen. The peace that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus crucified. Amen. Having heard the word of God, we now confess our common Christian faith by way of the Nicene Creed found there in your bulletins on page 8. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, how we rejoice before you as you give unto your church your word of law, directing us to our sins showing us exactly who we are, that our mouths may be stopped, that we would be held accountable for our sins before you, acknowledging, confessing, and repenting of them. We thank you also for granting us the good news of the gospel, that it would predominate in our lives, knowing that Jesus Christ is the sacrifice for our sins. He grants us forgiveness, life, and salvation even now. Grant us, O oh Lord, as your church, to draw ever closer unto Jesus, our Savior. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the gift of marriage given to your whole creation. We thank you for the 55th wedding anniversary of Paul and Diane Streeter. How blessed they are to live in your love, Heavenly Father. Bless and strengthen Paul and Diane in every way and grant them to rejoice in all you have done for them. Heavenly Father, bless those who have ongoing health concerns among us, for you know all of our needs and wants of body and soul. Hear our prayers for the sake of Jesus, our Savior, and through your mercy, answer. For we ask all of this in Jesus Christ. Amen. As we sing the offertory, we'll invite one of our ushers to come forward with our tithes this morning. If you've given on your way into church, we thank you for your generosity. If you will give on your way out, we thank you in advance for your generosity. We sing together the offertory.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created, and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh, to bear us and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this to in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, we took the cup after supper. When he'd given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
this true body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love for one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. Lord, look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn. 566, By Grace I'm Saved. 